What's going on everybody? King of Dragons 5000 here coming at you with another figure review. Today we'll be having a look at the Medicom Mafex Batman Hush Superman. And so here we have the Mafex Hush Superman pose and out of the packaging. Before we take a look at the figure, let's actually run through his accessories really fast. Superman does come with two different head sculpts. We do get the stoic head that he has on him right now. Then we do get an angry expression with heat beam eyes, which looks really good. We also get five pairs of hands. With Superman, we get a pair of fists. We get a pair of flat flight hands. We get a pair of relaxed hands. We get a pair of style pose hands. And then finally, we do get a pair of hands that hold the cape. I don't know why you want to do that, but it is included. We do get three vines, which do go around each of his arms and his neck, and those do look really nice. And finally, he does come with a fist with a kryptonite ring for your hush Batman, and that looks really, really good. With that out of the way, guys, Superman doesn't come with anything else, so let's take a closer look at his details. And so here we have a closer look at the Hush Superman. Now I think Mafex has done an amazing job with this figure. There are some things to like about this figure. In fact, there's a lot of things to like about this figure. I think the positives far outweigh the negatives with this figure. Let's actually talk about some of those negatives right now. I don't like how they did his eyebrows. I feel like it's a little too blue. I understand they were trying to go with the same highlights that they have in his hair, but his eyebrows come off as blue. Now, there's really nothing wrong with that. Under harsh lighting, you can tell that his eyebrows are completely blue. But you know what? Under normal lights, it looks black. So, again, it's just a nitpick under my harsh lighting. So, taking a look at the face. I do like the expression. It does look like the Hush version of Superman. If you haven't read Hush, I really recommend you do so. This does a really good job capturing the art style. So they did a really good job with it, especially from most angles. I think the one thing that's missing from Superman is a smiling expression or just something that makes him look happy because, I don't know, there's something about an angry Superman that kind of doesn't sit right with me. I think having a happy expression would have been really nice, especially because we only got two different heads with him. The heat beam eyes are a really nice touch, and this stoic head does look good, but it never hurts to have a smiling Superman. Really, really love the way they did the hair. You can see they did the curly cue perfectly. It's a, It looks like a free-floating piece, but I can't see a seam on where it might go to now. It might be attached somewhere up here, maybe right there. That looks like a seam. But yeah, it does a really good job of hiding itself, and that's a really good job. This face is really, really stoic for Superman, and it does do its job when getting him posed in serious poses. So, having a look at the rest of the outfit, let's actually take a look at the blue that they used for Superman. It's perfect. This is the kind of blue you would expect on your Superman figures. Now, they went with this really light blue, not really baby blue, but... This is the iconic blue that you think of when you think Superman. It's bright, it's vibrant, it's noticeable. I have no complaints about the blue that they use. It's really vibrant and really beautiful. I love it. The S, I believe, is painted on. It's not sculpted. Or if it's sculpted, it has a very subtle sculpting to it, which does come into a play when you look at the paint. You can see right here the line kind of didn't miss right there. And then a little bit right there. But overall, it's done exceptionally well. And it's not the perfect Superman S, but it is a Superman S nonetheless. So really got to give them props for that. It's not an easy insignia to draw for people that are trying to base it off memory. One thing I do like is that they did include the S on the back of his cape. Of course, Superman needed the S on his cape. And depending on who you ask depends on if the S is necessary on the back of the cape. Me, it's, it depends on which Superman is. I know Christopher Reeve had it. Uh, the DC Universe Classic Superman has it. I know the modern Superman also does. Yes, he does have it. So yeah, the modern Superman does have the S right here. And I think it looks better with the S. I don't really like comic Supermans just having a plain red cape. I think the S brings out a lot for this figure. And then again, we don't get any detailing on the back, but that's a really good musculature right there. They did a really good job sculpting this Superman, and he just looks imposing, just like you want a Superman figure to look. 
He has these really big, beefy arms, which is pretty accurate to Superman. You can see on mine, it does have a little bit of scraping where the paint and plastic just kind of scratch against each other, although it's not really too noticeable. It's just in that one area. Yeah, it's that one area, and it's so minor you'll never see it from a distance unless you're really, really looking for it. So having a look at the belt, I do feel like the belt is a little bit dull. They could have done a little bit better job with the belt, making it a brighter yellow. But that's kind of the way it was in a hush, so it is accurate. But again, I would have liked to see a brighter belt on Superman. Maybe a brighter red too. I don't know, that's just me. I would have liked to see brighter colors. But yeah, going down to his really muscular legs, all the way down to the Superman iconic M style boots where they even sculpted the line right here at the top of the boot so that's really nice you can see I do have a little bit of an error right there on this side it looks pretty clean so yeah they painted the boots really well and something I do like is that because the boots are painted with the feet they do match in color we don't have the problem where the feet are molded in red and then this is painted red the feet are actually painted and you can tell because when I do this with a joint, you can see some of the paint flaking in that joint. It's not a big deal because you, you're never going to see that joint, but I do like the fact that it does match. And that's something that a lot of companies have a problem with is matching reds, red paint with plastic. And for the most part, the reds do match all the way around. So I got to give them props there. And one thing I do like about this cape is the wireframe that they use in it. It's a really sturdy wire. You can see it does hold its shape really, really nicely, and I do love that. I would rather have an articulated cape like this than a, just one that hangs down, or even just a plastic cape. I think this is the way to go for all caped figures. So that's the Mafex Superman's details for you. So what we're going to do now is actually get them compared to other figures you may have in your collection, especially other Superman, which I've accumulated over the years. So let's actually go on to the comparisons. And so here we have the Mafex Superman posed next to a Marvel Legends Cyclops and a DC Multiverse Superman. Here we have Superman posed next to a WWE Elite Scale figure and a Mezco 112 Collective Popeye the Sailor Man. Here we have Superman posed next to a Lightning Collection White Ranger and a Star Wars Black Series Mandalorian. Here we have Superman posed next to a DC Universe Classic Superman and a Mattel Multiverse Dark Knight Return Superman. And finally here we have the Mafex Hush Superman posed next to the Hush Mafex Batman. So with the comparisons out of the way, let's actually have a look at his articulation. Now Superman here does have a pretty decent amount of articulation. We do have a double barbell here at the head so he can look up exceptionally well. He can look down quite a bit so I do like that. We do get some really nice head tilt, as you can see it moves around nicely, does get left and right rotation. Then we do have a ball joint at the neck which also helps with upward and downward movement so he does bury his head all the way down into his chin which I do like that. We do have a ball joint here at the shoulder, not really a butterfly joint, it's just a ball joint going into the torso so it does pivot back and forward, can pivot up, can pivot down so that works really nicely goes out to the side all the way horizontally no problems there does do a full 360 no issues we do have a bicep swivel which works really good do like that cut then we have double bend at the elbow giving us better than 90 degrees so i do like this joint we get his wrist does have a ball joint so it does hinge in and out we can rotate that to have an up and down hinge and then of course it does rotate on that peg he does have a, I want to say it's a single ball joint here at the torso, which does let him arc back only to about that far. Uh, arcs forward, not that great at all. He does have some surprisingly good tilt and rotation right here. Most of the articulation we get is coming from his waist, so let's actually show that off. Going back, you can see he doesn't really arch too far back which is pretty understandable. You don't have figures arching that far back anyway. Arching forward, he has really, really good movement, so I really do like that. And then, of course, it does rotate here on that ball joint. And moving it side to side, we get even better range because there's a lot of movement in this ball joint. I really do like that. We do have drop-down ball hinges right here for his 
legs so they do drop down go out to the side eh, could be better going out to the side kicking forward no problem going forward going back really nicely we have a thigh swivel which works really good double bend at the knee works no problem uh, one thing that i have noticed is that his joints have a tendency to get caught on themselves so you've got to pay attention to his knees and elbows to make sure they don't snag against each other so do keep that in mind everybody we do have rotation here at the boot a hinge in the ankle going back and forward forward facing pin for rocker ankle and then we have a toe hinge which i'm probably never going to use on superman but it's there in case you want to use it so overall hush superman has a really good array of articulation and in case i didn't mention it Really good wireframe for the cape. So with that out of the way, guys, let's actually get him posed for my final thoughts, and then we'll wrap up this review. And so here we have the Medicom Mafix Hush Superman posed for my final thoughts. And overall, this is an exceptionally well done figure. There's a lot to love about this Superman. If you're a fan of the Hush series or just want a really good Superman in your collection, this is a must-have figure. I know I say that about a lot of figures, but this is shaping up to be the definitive 112th version of Superman. I do say that having quite a bit of Superman in my collection and having a 112th version of Superman isn't something that's hard to come by, but having one with this amount of articulation, detail, and just the right amount of accessories is pretty hard to come by, and I think this Superman is exemplifies what it means to be a really good Superman figure. Now, there is a catch-2020 to this figure. So this version of Superman is, of course, made by Medicom and Mafex, which is an import company. So if you are looking to get this figure, you are looking to spend anywhere within the realm of $65 all the way to $110, depending on where you order it from. That's not a small bit of change by any stretch of the imagination. And like I said, he has a lot of great details to make him a really good Superman figure and probably one of the best versions of Superman that we got. Now, I was lucky enough to pick up my Superman for $65 from Hobby Link Japan. However, getting him shipped was quite expensive. I actually got Superman shipped with three other figures and the shipping itself was almost $50. So you round that down and that's almost like it's $12 a figure. $12 a shipping is pretty good for express shipping but having it imported by itself would have been $20 on its own so I am really glad I did ship them out with several other figures if you're lucky enough to get this figure from Hobby Link Japan or Ami Ami he is starting to ship now so you can add him to the cart and get him shipped out as soon as possible other retailers such as Big Red Toy Store and Entertainment Earth will be getting him within the next month so if you did pre-order from there do be expecting that notice at any moment in the coming month with that being said guys i'm king of dragons 5000 don't forget to like this video leave a comment subscribe to my channel go check out all my other action figure reviews as well as all my other superman dc and mafex videos hopefully you find them informative as always if there's a figure you would like to see me review let me know down in the comments and if it's in my collection i'll definitely have a look at it while you're at it check out my instagram account for new and exciting action figure photos and as always ring that bell to be notified every time i upload a video until next time guys, I'll see you later. Take care everyone.